What we're looking at here are some artifacts from a gentleman named Louis Jordan. And uh, Louis Jordan was a leader of a band called the Timpani Five, and he's probably the most important transitional figure in rock and roll. And by that I mean he was a guy who was the linchpin between big bands and jazz and early rhythm and blues and early rock and roll. He had a very small group, the Timpani Five. Sometimes it was up to seven people. And what we see here are the charts, the scores for his group. And he would go on the road, and this is what the, his musicians would play off of. This over here is his saxophone. He's a very talented soloist on this alto saxophone. But Jordan also specifically targeted teenagers and young people as his audience. Here was a middle-aged African-American man who became known as the king of the bobby soxers. Bobby soxers were teenagers who wore saddle shoes and little white socks and long skirts, mostly girls, obviously. And he became the biggest selling African-American artist in America, an immensely popular star at the time. Now, as far as him targeting his songs, the music was about things that were young people were interested in, or they were slightly humorous songs. They had a very interesting appeal that way, but also they were very danceable. Jordan was an incredibly important figure to people like Chuck Berry, who cited him as his biggest influence, and also to people like Little Richard and James Brown. What we're also looking at here is a thing called a disto map. Now, any of us can go online and find you know, some sort of mileage calculator, but back in the day, there's a physical thing called a disto map where you, you dial in the various cities. So if you were in, say, Austin, Texas, and you need to go to Oklahoma City, you'd line up Austin, Texas, and you'd turn a little thing to Oklahoma City, and then a number would come up to say what the mileage was. Low tech, but it certainly worked.